Since independence in 1964, Zambia has had its fair share of dissidents and deviants, men and women that have defied the social order, often to the point of their own death and the death of others. Now what is interesting is that most of these rather odd individuals justified their criminal acts as protests against the abnormalities of organized society, seeing themselves as victims, vigilantes, and even heroes of sorts. In this series, we will profile some of the most infamous and notorious personalities in Zambian history. The actions of some of these characters are so intriguing that many have been quick to speculate and draw unrealistic conclusions. But beyond the speculations and intrigue, one cannot help but wonder whether these actions are simply isolated incidents committed by disturbed individuals, or do they reveal certain aspects of the social fabric of certain Zambian communities that require deeper analysis and perhaps even greater concern? Hi, I'm Victor Sims, the Z historian, and welcome to Dissidents, Deviants, and Demons. Now, the story of the Milo brothers is one of the most popular and controversial tales in Zambian history. From what is known, from 2007, in a small village in Wano Valley in central Zambia, three brothers reign amok, terrorizing their community and committing gruesome acts of violence, banditry, and cold blooded murder. For over seven years, the people of Wano lived in constant fear, unable to go about their daily lives. And by the time the brothers were gunned down by security forces, 12 people had been killed and dozens had fled their homes in fear. Now indeed, the story of the brothers is complex and many-sided and cannot be understood by a simple narrative or oversimplification of actual events. And on the other hand, as in many cases in Africa, where a logical explanation is not forthcoming, Many have been quick to bring in issues to do with witchcraft and black magic. So were the brothers wizards or mad men driven by bloodlust? Or were they cunning and sophisticated sociopaths? What triggered the actions of the brothers? And why did it take so long for them to be stopped? Were the brothers men or demons? <laughs> As always, to understand the story fully, we must go back to the beginning. And our story begins in the Wano Valley, commonly referred to by the locals as Kenan, or Land of the Waiting. Luano is often referred to as the Land of the Waiting. It is said that life in Luano is so simple that even a lazy but patient man can survive. They have uh, a very rich uh, <laughs> lifestyle in terms of their way of life and the, the food they eat. Where they stay, of course, we can say that they are really cut off from the rest of the community because it's a sunken place. But essentially, Guano Valley is very expansive and extensive as well. So the lifestyle of the people there being followed because they follow the, the settlements are along the Musemfa River. Because the, the, the Musemfa River is very rich in the marine life or water life, you find a lot of fish there, they do a lot of fishing. So the, one of their livelihoods is around fishing. And then it's rich in game. The people in the valley are hunters because they live with game. So they, they have a lot of hunting skills. When you are born as a boy in Luano Valley, you, grow, you are growing up. Those are the things that they pay attention to. You got to know how to hunt, how to trap animals, how to kill using spears. That is, of course, animals. And also, how to fish. It was this kind of lifestyle of simply waiting that made the villagers in Luano so cherish their home. However, it was also this lifestyle that made them easy prey for the Mylon brothers. When the killing started, the Mylon brothers knew the villagers every move and routine. Thus, all they had to do was lay ambushes for their targets and wait. Indeed, 
Duwano appeared to be a well-knit society where residents were friendly and offered sociable gestures of support. However, beneath the facade of hospitality and an easygoing lifestyle lay a number of problems. In fact, the episode of the brothers' killings exposed many of these challenges that the people of Luano were facing as a community at the time. So, let us look at some of the challenges that the people of Luano faced. To begin with, as already mentioned, Luano was an isolated, underdeveloped area, effectively cut off from the rest of the country. Luano is situated in the heart of central Zambia. It is approximately 130 kilometers from Kawe town and 149 kilometers from the capital of Saka. An unforgiving terrain, Luano Valley is characterized by hills, galleys, huge trees, tall blades of grass, and thorny bushes. It was further characterized by harsh temperatures, festive life infestation, and the lack of proper social amenities. Now you may wonder why people would inhabit such a seemingly inhospitable environment. Well, according to common folklore from the valley, during colonial times, Africans that wanted freedom, especially those that opposed colonial taxes such as the hut and the dog tax, sought refuge in the remote and hostile region of Luano Valley. Worse still, government workers such as teachers, medical personnel and police and other civil servants did not fancy serving in the area. This made the valley a hub of lawlessness, a place closed up, static, and depraved. To further understand the troubles that plagued Luano Valley during the time of the brothers, we also have to consider the people as well as the demographic composition of the area at the time. Generally, the people of Luano are said to be a combination of Luba Lunda tribes and collectively referred to as Avena Luano. Lala was the main language spoken in Luano, and apart from Lala and Swaka, other notable languages in the valley included Bemba, Bisa, and Soli. People in Luano Valley fell under the chieftainship of Chief Chembe, who was linked to the Lunda chieftainship of Luapula. Though he is believed to have originated from Matanda in Mwata Kazembe's chiefdom. It is believed during the time of the brothers' killings, there was a silent chieftainship dispute in the valley, and that the brothers were somehow tied to it. It was for this reason that many members of the community, including the brother's uncle, Mr. Bawakawich Pokolo, wanted to get rid of the brothers at all costs. Luano Valley was also endowed with an abundance of natural resources. There were also reports from the valley of illegal mining of gold, manganese, copper, zinc, and other precious stones. This could explain why a Land Rover belonging to a Muzungu had been seen in the area as far back as 1954. It could easily also explain why the area was a priority for the flying doctor service. In an area where many locals treated themselves with traditional medicine, the consistent presence of the flying doctor service in the area equally begged the question, why? Trapping animals and hunting were also major preoccupations in Luano. As such, hunting was a requisite skill for all young men in the valley. From an early age, boys used traps, spears, catapults, and dogs to hunt. Some of the villagers equally owned muzzle loaders also used for hunting. Hunters from Luano were said to be such skilled trackers they could identify both animals and people by their footprints. They could further track animals for days, surviving on nothing but what they foraged from the land. It was all these factors, and the fact that the brothers grew up under such conditions, that made them such dangerous foes. It is said amongst the hunters in the valley, the brothers were amongst the best. The brothers uh, started their killings uh, according to the information that we collected. Their first victim, Mr. Montoroka, was uh, uh, killed in self-defense. And knowing that they had killed someone, they had to run away from justice, uh, go in the bush. And to survive, they now started uh, attacking the villagers, 
and uh, some of them killing them. There are a number of them that survived their attacks, but uh, those that they killed, we find that they uh, actually would use their spears and the victims would be stabbed not less than 14 times. Uh, there's also a list that they had of those that they would have killed. And uh, when they kill the, their next victim, they would go and record it. And uh, say, we have killed this person, he is a fourth man, for example. Meaning that there was a list that they were following. These are villages which were in the state with no prior military no arms, but use of psychological warfare on the people who knew they had a terrain and attacked. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and look out for my book on the Milan Brothers. In the next episode, we'll look at the point at which things started changing and going wrong for the brothers. We'll also profile their self-proclaimed leader, Tunda Milo. Join me next time on the next episode of Dissidents, Deviants and Demons.